millions of vulnerable Americans struggle to get reliable transportation to their medical appointments. That's why I started MedHall. City launched the Impact Fund to invest in both women and entrepreneurs of color like me so I can realize my vision and give everything I've got to my company and my community. I got you. For the love of people, for the love of community, for the love of progress, City. Hello and welcome everyone to a Paley Fest Fall TV previews. I'm Kevin Frazier, host of Entertainment Tonight. But today, I am so excited to be hosting this conversation and celebration of the Wonder Years. And um, I just want to say thanks to Paley Fest's official card and official sponsor, City, for helping make this event possible. Today, we have the cast and crew and the creative team behind this reimagining of the Wonder Years that I think once you see it, you are going to love. Um, let me introduce everybody. Let's start with the one and only E.J. Williams, who plays Dean Williams in the show. He's the new Kevin Arnold. Hey, E.J. Dulé Hill is his daddy and um, also play, uh, plays Bill Williams, who is a musician, a professor, and um, his main thing in life, just be cool, right? That's right, be cool. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> I love it. Hey, good to see you. Sekhan Sang Blah. I just saw you on the carpet at um, Respect, and now I get to see you again. You will play um, Dean's mother, Lillian Williams. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hey, how about Laura Karayuki, who plays Kim Williams, Woke Before Woke was a term, right? You're <laughs> Dean's sister. <laughs> good air. I get it. And the creative team behind this process. Saladin Patterson, writer, showrunner, executive producer, um, guy who has been around the block and written a few shows in his lifetime. Hey, everybody. Fred Savage. Um, if anybody knows about the Wonder Years, it's Fred Savage. And um, he's also directing uh, a few of these episodes and is an EP on this. I have before by accident called Fred Kevin. I mean, it, it's happened. <laughs> it happens. And then the man who's making the whole engine go, the one and only Lee Daniels, executive producer of this. What hasn't he done? Lee, thanks. And Lee, I want to start with you. Yeah. What made you think that we could come back and reimagine the wonder here? Well, you know, it, it, why not? You know, I don't think that we ever saw a family um, in this time. Mm -hmm. I lived this period, you know, and I don't think that we've seen uh, a black family like this ever, uh, middle class, uh, experiencing the trials and tribulations of, of what America experienced during this time. Why not? I love the Wonder Years. And um, um, I was scared a little bit because it was so, Fred was just spectacular in it. And, and the show was just spectacular that, you know, to even try to reimagine it is, was unimaginable. Um, mm -hmm. But it was such, it was so special to me. And this time period is so special to me. And it's so potent with so much that country was in such turmoil, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, but why not? We haven't seen it before. And uh, why not? You know, so um, I didn't want to direct it. I didn't want to write it. I was too scared. I was definitely too scared. So, um, you know, in comes Saladin. And in comes Fred, who, you know, who um, the two of them together are a lethal combination. I was a little, you know, people say, okay, Fred is white. What does he know about directing this whole black world? But Fred is a truth teller, you know, and um, it goes beyond race. Uh, he tapped into the human condition when he was able to sort of, um, I mean, you saw the pilot, you, you saw what he was able to do with these actors. He knows, you know, he knows as a kid what it was. So yeah, it's just, it's the perfect combination uh, and the perfect timing right now for, uh, for, I just want to do something different and something that was unexpected. And to me, this is such an, it's so left from empire. It's so mm -hmm. left from some of the stuff that I do. And, yeah. and, and it's going to make all my mother's church people just calm down. This is not crazy. <laughs> <And laughs> finally, this ain't crazy. This ain't crazy, <laughs> Lee Daniels. 
This is fun to you. So the church see it, they can relax and they can have fun. You know what's funny, Lee, about you saying it's left, but really it's really the truth, as you said. It's, this is what so many of us experience because we're about the same age and we experience this. Growing up, this was our normal life. And so, Fred, bringing the other side, you're, you're bringing an other side of the wonder years for someone. What has this experience been like you have been like for you? Because we're almost 30 years removed from the end of the run in 1993 of the original show. I will say be, being associated with, with this show um, uh, this time around is just one of the great uh, honors of my career. You know, with these people on this panel are just people I uh, have admired for, for years or have admired since the day I've met them. And uh, to be walking with them uh, and on this journey is just uh, just one of the great honors of my my life. And to be able to to revisit the show in this way. Uh, has been, uh, you know, completely familiar in some ways and wholly enlightening in, in others. And and I think, um, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do with this show is to kind of honor tonally the original, you know, um, to blend comedy and drama in a way that that we did, you know, years ago. Um, the lens of the show, you know, an, an adult looking back on his life and looking back on his childhood and 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 reconciling that with, with with where he is today, and looking back on those years so fondly, you know, those are the wonder years, not just to the original narrator, um, but to the narrator of this one, and also to the audience. You're looking back on the, on those times of adolescence with loves and your best friends and your first heartbreaks and 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 seeing your parents as heroes and realizing they're human and all, all these hallmarks of adolescence. You know, we're, we're still trying to stay true to, to the lens and the tone of the original, but obviously telling it, you know, with an African-American family set in the same time in Montgomery, Alabama, um, you know, we're, we're, we're telling uh, a new story. You know, this is this is a, a totally new chapter. Um, and there are lots of families growing up in 1968. It wasn't yes. just Arnold's. And, and this is this is the story of another family in another part of the country at the same time, um, with all the beauty and complications that that brings. All right. So why EJ? Because this is a role that is iconic. And so what was it like? Because we all saw the beautiful call where you told EJ he, he got the role. Why EJ? Tell me about it. EJ is an extraordinary actor and an and, and even better young man. Um, and, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, I don't want to not not. Not to contradict you, Kevin, at all, but you know we weren't we didn't set out looking for the, the a, a, a new Kevin. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We set out looking for the right actor to tell this story. You know, um, I think if anything, we're looking for a young Saladin as opposed <laughs> to, uh, to, to a new Kevin. And so, uh, you know, this was um, he brought uh, just um, you know he's an, he's a wonderful actor. You know, but he's also got these intangibles. You know, he's a a wonderful young man. He's incredibly empathetic, incredibly human. Um, he's sweet and wise, and none, those don't compromise one another. He understands comedy, and um, I mean, look at this guy. Look at his, look at these eyes. I mean, how do you how do you how do you look, how do you look at the, how do you look at these, these eyes and not just get instantly hypnotized? And and we were we we saw we saw you know obviously hundreds of kids as you can imagine. And from the moment we met EJ. Uh, we knew that we were looking at, 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 at an extraordinary talent and just a special, special kid. EJ, what was it like when you got that call? For me, it was it was a lot of things, you know, but worried or concerned was not one of them. And I say that for a lot of reasons. But for me personally, it um, me getting the job meant more than just another gig like like the Wonder Years is. It's to tell a story. And me personally, um, hearing about the things from family that I've had, and like I'm blessed enough to have both of my great grandmothers alive who have lived through different times, especially this one the most. And because of that, it meant more to me. And I've wanted to put the the goodness of the goodness, um, the the good side of it out there more, you know. And because normally when you think of those times, you think of the Jim Crow laws, you think of uh, the civil rights, what was happening in those times. But it's not just those because 
everybody has bad times is, but just like everybody has good times. Yeah. You know what that is? That, that's a great point because we don't get to see the complexities and the beauty of the black community on television during those times. We always see our, us in, in turmoil. Saladin, mm-hmm. you grew up in Alabama, right? Um, how in the world you're wasting an engineering degree from MIT, I don't know. But anyway, um, I, I, this is in many ways you're writing about how you grew up. Right. Tell me about writing this. So, you know, um, obviously, as you said, it's very personal to me. And it kind of goes back to what Lee was saying when you asked him, you know, why, why he wanted to get the rights to the original. Because, um, you know, to be honest, Kevin, I was scared, too. When, when Lee first approached me to do this, I was like, I don't want to be the guy that messed up the one of the years. I don't want to be the guy that just did Black Wonder Years, you know, just, just slapping the same character names on whatever. And so two things stood out to me. First was um, quickly realized, you know, Lee obviously did not want to do that either. Lee really was leaning into the fact that we have not seen the late 60s or the civil rights movement told from the point of view of the Black middle class experience. And, and just the fact that there was a Black middle class experience that we don't see represented a lot on media really, you know, showed me, okay, you know, that, that satisfies one of the, the variables that you always look for in terms of a good idea, um, something that's, rel- that's relatively familiar to an audience, but from a different point of view. So I satisfied that. What then helped me wrap my head around it was when Lee and 20th and ABC were, um, were, were so open to me basing it, like you said, on my family and my family's experiences, my mom, my dad, my aunts and uncles, and then on my adolescent experience, because I knew the only way we could navigate the precarious waters of trying to reimagine something so beloved as the original was to always be able to fall on truth as our touchstone. And I was like, as long as I can make it true to my own personal experiences, then I can answer all those questions about why you guys redoing the Wonder Years? Why you gotta make it black? Like, well, you know, this is a personal family experience that other families will relate to in a direct way. And if we tell the stories right, other families who aren't black will relate to it as well because we'll see some of that universality that goes on in terms of all coming of age stories, all stories about adolescence, all yes. stories about your first crush, you know, about your best friends that you, you fall in and out of friendship with, you know, about how you see your parents as larger than life. All those things are universally relatable things that will, will come through this as long as we start with that truth. And I'm very humbled and blessed that that truth is based on my family and my family's experiences and things like that. So, you know, that was the only way I could wrap my head around doing it, Kevin, honestly, because that's the only way I thought it would be done well. And by the way, I mentioned that Saladin was from Alabama because the show is based in Birmingham, Alabama um, uh, in that in that time period. All right, I want to talk to the Williams family and I want to tar- start with Dooley. You've worked with Saladin before and what, tell me about the responsibility of bringing the Williams family to life in a true and authentic way. Well, I think uh, anytime you have a chance to tell a story where you can widen the lens, like, mm-hmm. you know, I guess let people have a peek into an experience that isn't often seen on television. You want to make sure you do it justice. On top of that, knowing that it is related to Saladin's upbringing, you want to do honor and justice to that. I mean, unfortunately, I have worked with Saladin before. <laughs> you know, uh, so that I mean, that's the I mean, that was that's the main thing for me is making sure that we you you tell the story to the fullness of what it is because it's very easy to fall into the certain cliche, cliches of the time, mm-hmm. even as. EJ was saying like there's more, it's more beyond Jim Crow and civil rights. That's a part of the experience. But in the midst of any challenging time, we always find a way to find joy. We always find a way to find unity. We always find a way to laugh in the midst of sorrow. And that's that's what attracted me to the role. And that's really what the, I guess the the challenge will be is to make sure we tell that story in the in the proper way, in the full so, fullness of it all. Yeah, say God, so many people will watch you and say, I remember my mama doing that. Mm-hmm. Or I remember this moment and that. And, and what's that been like for you? Oh, it's been hilarious. Like, mm-hmm. honestly, um, you know, we look back at the things that our, our parents did. All of us. We all have parents. Right. And, mm-hmm. and we I think you're able I'm able to humanize my mother um, and also um, find joy and laughter at just the quirky things that she finds. um super important, but are important um, to her and may not have been as important to me as a kid. Um, (laughs) Right when you asked me that, I thought about this scene where I was I was checking his uh, checking his elbow to see how dry the skin was. Mm -hmm. Like, come here, boy, let me check on you. You know, like (laughs) (laughs) like 
it, it's just so much fun. It's a lot of fun to be able to present all these different sides of the Black family. Um, I think that all people, all everybody across the world is going to love us. I think um, I was thinking that our show is it's perfectly derivative of the original show in an original black way in the way that like Mm -hmm. Creed was to the Rocky series. Like, I feel like we, it's our own story. You know, when, when Fred said we weren't looking for the new Kevin, we were looking for this kid for this particular story. I think that's so true. And um, just being a part of it, I'm, it's, it's a sheer joy in my life. I'm, I'm so excited and so blessed and, and just really excited to work with everybody here. You know what, Laura, I love the way that there are little insinuations, little hints about different things going on at the time, especially through your character that may not have Mm -hmm. said, you know, we always think that there is one, this monolithic theme that goes, runs through all black families, but we see the differences in your character brings up some of those differences that are going on in the family very subtly. Yeah, she definitely does. Cause I feel like for Kim, she's definitely going through a big transition in her life because she's transitioning into her womanhood. But then with the little different things is how involved does she want to get with the Black Panther movement and dealing with everything that's going on, not only in the world at the time, but also within her family and differencing in opinions. But super exciting, a challenge, but a lot of fun. Yeah, the T-shirts, everything. I mean, it, it all is there. Just the little things that mean a lot. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Lee, so... yeah. When you got to see this, the first, and, and you guys, have, you have, you're at two episodes in, but I'm sure you've seen the first one. What goes mm-hmm. through your mind when you watch this? Because what went through my mind when I watched this is I was like, oh, I, I wanted to breathe and be like, finally, yes, mm-hmm. yes. I live, I, this is what it's like, y'all. This is what it was like for my family. Mm-hmm. I, I, okay, I, they don't know this yet, but I cried. I cried I because that. I had not seen a, uh, a, uh, um, a family like this of color that represented my family on screen before, blackness. And there's a lot of talk about blackness, you know, of doing it and we're, and sometimes they just put blackness on for the sake of blackness. And sometimes for, and for me, it's, a, it's not hitting home because the substance isn't there, you know? So when you have, um, Great actors, and these are incredible. Dulé is on some next level crazy, what he's doing right now. I ain't never seen him like this before. Seriously, I ain't never seen Dulé like this before. And I know Dulé's work. And so when you are dealing with that blackness and that unapologeticness uh, of being black, spearheaded by Saladin, it gives me chills, you know, because it's, um, at the end of the day, you know, it, 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 um, I, I knew that it was, not right for me to 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 create. I knew it was better off in his hands, and um, and uh, I knew that my mom really. I knew that my mom was gonna, you know, it wasn't the drama that Empire had. It wasn't all of that crazy, that outrageous that you know, mm-hmm. which is what I love, you know, which is America loves. But this is a more sedate uh, side of me um, that. Um, that America needs to see. So it's, 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 I, I got emotional. So, I'm, and I'm really proud of everybody. I think everybody here is top notch movie stars to be and uh, look out for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Fred, the twists and the turns, Wonder Years had those twists and turns and now we continue to see it again. And, um, but these are different twists and turns. We see another side of people's reactions. What is it, what are you learning as you see this other side? Uh, learning as far as like my my role on the other side of of the show or yeah well as directing <laughs> it but also you're, you're seeing it from a different perspective right you're seeing it from a different perspective yes no i think um you know it really is blowing my mind and you know helping me realize kind of how far I, i've come in this career I, you know the one years was <clears throat> when i first thought oh maybe i'd like to be a director and that that could be something i i'd like to do um, and so I followed that path and it set me on this road that brought me right back to, to a new version of the Wonder Years. So I, I feel both 
um, totally comfortable, you know, in this, in this, in this chair, in this role. I feel like I've been working towards this for my whole career, but at the same time, I look at EJ and, and the other young actors on the show and I'm with them in two seconds. I'm with them in two seconds. <laughs> exactly what they're, uh, you know, experiencing just professionally. I know, I know the pull, the, the pulls of school and professional and family. I know the thrills of being on set. I know how to, mm-hmm. and so I'm, I'm right there with them. And um, it's a really unique place to be where I can be both totally connected to the young people on the cast, but also, you know, sit, sit, you know, alongside, um, you know, Celadine and, and Lee and, and help try and shape the, the vision of the show overall. The kids are so great too. The way that they all come together, the kids like Mm -hmm. explosive. They're going to be to all the new hot teens, the rage. They're going to be on all the magazines. They have to, you guys, whenever you guys are together, you're just electric. What'd you say? I said, is Tiger Beat still out there? Yeah, they're going to be on Tiger (laughs) Beat. What's really really fascinating, uh, Saladin, is what you're able to do. And I'm not thinking about it. A lot of young mothers and fathers will learn what parenting was like Right. Back then, what, the, mm-hmm. what we knew as parents, you know, what we what we appreciate as parents. So I think that I think that there'll be a lot of learning too uh, for young lost parents that are out there that aren't doing their jobs the way our parents did. Interestingly, too, because everything is so politically correct now, you get to see how yes. some things that people would just say, <laughs> like you know, we're. You know, we bite our tongues a lot, but, you know, when, for example, when our grandfather comes, it's like, oh, that's how granddaddy talk, you right. know, like it's, it's going to be really powerful. I'm going to say real quick that, like, right. I think there's something powerful about widening the lens. And that's what I appreciate about this show, because it is such a familiar story that I think a lot of the viewing audience can relate to. Now being that it's a different family in the same time, we're widening the lens. And through that, we'll be able to see things that we can relate to, but also will be enlightened to things that are different from a different point of view, from a different experience. So that's, uh, I mean, I, def- I applaud Saladin for, for creating this world and actually applaud Lee too for having the desire, asking the question of why not, but also mm-hmm. having the humility to say, not me though. Mm-hmm. Not. Mm-hmm. Well, it ain't humility, it's just, it's oh. just common sense, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, there it is, you know what I mean? But a lot of folks no. don't even use that common sense. A lot of folks will still say, no, I'm gonna do it. But having that wisdom to say, you know what, this needs to be told, but I need to I need to expand the lens and have someone else tell their story through this lens, uh, through this experience, I think is a powerful thing. So I look forward to the the audience getting a chance to experience this journey that we're about to go on. Uh, You know, the original show won a Peabody Award. um, Fred, you were nominated after the first season um, for an Emmy, the youngest person ever nominated for an Emmy. So. EJ, you see all these lofty goals that the original had, but this seems really smart. So what will Dean have that's different than Kevin? Well, Dean will have a lot of stuff that's different from Kevin. You know, um, I want to I want to. I would I would explain I would describe Dean as a satellite and I describe him like that because he sees all the different things that's happening around him as well as what happens um, in his own house, you know, his in-house experiences and his outside in the world experiences are completely different from um, what it is today, you know, and he has to, he has to, he has to comprehend it. And I know even for kids today, it's not always easy for them to comprehend certain things like little kids with COVID nowadays. Like you, how are you going to explain to a kid mm. that they just can't go outside and hang out with people. It's just, it's not like that anymore, you know? And for Dean, I think that he has something different was he can comprehend things mm. very, very well. Mm. Uh, this show begins with a great connection to the current times. I don't want to give it away, Sandeem, but it is, we, it's the more we change, the more we remain the same in many ways, right? For sure, for sure. Um, you know, and that's something that also... That's something we we made a conscious decision, you know, as you point out, Kevin, to lean into. But it was, it was our way of showing how this show is still relevant now. You know, um, there's, there's standard industry jargon, um, jargon. Sorry, when you go in and pitch, they always say, "Okay, you you got to answer the why now question. Why not question?" And I hate that. Mm-hmm. I hate it when they say you got to answer the why not question. I'm like, why not? Because I want to. Because I, I want to do this now. But <laughs> it's really a lot to this one, though. Because now is the time. 
<laughs> exactly, you know, but it applied here because, you know, yes, it's sitting in, in the late 60s and there are so many, so many parallels. It, 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 it's, it's ironic, it's interesting, in some ways it's sad mm. how similar the things that we're still struggling with now in terms of the racial divide, in terms of the partisanship, in terms of the gender issues, you know, in terms of, of you know, the wars and, 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 and Americans questioning our influence overseas, you know, how much is enough, how much is not enough. Like all those things were going on in the turbulent 60s and people at the time felt like there were no answers to these questions, no solutions to these problems, you know, and, and like the generation like that Laura represents in the show felt there were no adults guiding them. They had to figure it out on their own. So there's all this turmoil going on. And we find ourselves like, you know, in, in the early 2020s feeling the same thing, the same kind of partisanship, the same divides, the same racial issues we thought had gone away or resurfacing again, you know? Um, and it hit me early on, if, if we can look back at the late 1960s and how turbulent that was, and we call that the wonder years because mm. we're able to find nostalgia mm. and, and commonality and hope and joy and memories in it. And we can still look at that and call it the wonder years. One day, 20 years from now, our kids, you know, Josh and, and Shane, you know, yeah. Ollie, you know, they're gonna look back to the 2020s and they're gonna say it's their wonder years. So mm -hmm. it's crazy and as hopeless as we feel right now today, because wow. we don't know how these, these problems are gonna be solved. They will be solved, you know, and mm -hmm. there, there will be good things that exist now that people will remember. And if this show, and it's gonna sound so corny and cliche, but I mean it in my heart, if this show can help us see that in the turbulent times of today, that we're making wonder years, just like we made wonder years in the late 60s, then I think it can give us some hope to see past the things that we don't see the answers to now. Mm. Amen. Amen, amen. Saladin um, Patterson, everybody. Saladin Patterson. <laughs> yes, yes. No, I was the like, Reverend Saladin Patterson. No, wait, Kevin, Kevin, Can we put that on Instagram? Show, right, Kevin. You see why he's writing this show, right? Oh yeah, no, no. Oh, he's yeah. that. He's that country preacher. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a past the election plate around to these. these <laughs> people, but they got a lot more money than me, Kevin. So. Uh, <laughs> I do want to ask um, Laura and Sekhan, I wanted, I was watching the show and I also, I mean, and Sekhan, you're trapped in this right now, but 60s, 60s clothing, how much fun have you had playing with the clothing? Because I look at that late 60s, early 70s clothing. I remember it. I remember having to go to Sears and get tough skins, you know, because I couldn't wear the <laughs> knees out in my jeans. Or my mama would, you know, be really upset. So what about the clothing? Are you bringing back or what have you had fun with? Uh, either one of them can answer that. Oh, I've had so much fun yeah. with the clothing. And I feel like even how you said earlier, it's a way of expression and yes. showing how you feel about certain issues and speaking out about things just in the clothing. And the costumes are beautiful. I'm so excited. First of all, and Laura looks like if Lupita and Naomi Campbell walked in the door and were <laughs> mashed together. <laughs> <same time. laughs> so she's got the go-go boots, the like the t-shirt, all the everything you were describing. And shout out to Ceci, our costume designer. She's doing an awesome job. I always say the 60s is my era. OK, uh -huh. like the, the dresses with the waist coming in because, honey, skinny jeans are not friendly to me. OK, <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I just I'm loving I'm enjoying the clothes and I love seeing the guys in the clothes, the, the afros, you know, the smoothness, you know, do be having his hat. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's really nice. It's, it's a vibe. That's all. That's that's what I always have to say. It's a vibe. Like, I think uh -huh. the people are going to love the wardrobe. And honestly, um. The little the home decorator in me <laughs> when we were in the house, there's this lamp that's, that's in the house that I would always be like, oh, I just love this lamp. Like just people who just enjoy just aesthetics in general, just the 60s aesthetic. If, if you're into that, you're going to really be here for it because because that's what we're doing. It's gorgeous. I just can't wait to see the dashikis. That's what I'm waiting for. <laughs> so bring them back. Come on. Dashikis, all everything, everything. <laughs> Lee, you laughed about that. You, I know you had a dashiki, too. I did have one, but here's the thing, it, you know, it's also the, it's not just the costumes that are great, it's who's wearing them and how they mm. sort of fit on them. They don't even feel like, they're wardrobe. Right. The actors are making them wardrobe and it's the swag and the tone that um, Fred has created uh, mm. just in the mood, you know? Part of it was, oh gosh, I feel like I'm bragging about our show because I'm, 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 that's how excited I am about it. But, <laughs> it's a vibe, you know, it's, it's a vibe, yeah. It's, it's a vibe. It is a mm -hmm. vibe. It's a specific vibe 
that has a swag to it. And, um, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, it's a swag that I, that I carry with my work, you know, and that's why I'm so proud of it because I feel like, you know, I feel like it's part of me. So I feel like he, he really captured the swag of, uh, it's not Wonder Years, the Wonder Years that we, it's just updated sort of, it's, it's, it's Fred sort of swag. So it's good, mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's happening. It's a vibe, thank yep. you. It's a vibe, <laughs> it's, it's just a vibe. Fred, have you had a chance to talk to other folks from the uh, original and what, are, what is their overall like thought about the uh, reimagining and do any of them want to pop up? Huh. Well, um, I have talked to, uh, you know, before, you know, last summer when when the announcement first came out that that that, that ABC was gonna you know let us do a, a pilot, uh, I talked to you know I talked to Danica, uh, I talked to Josh, I talked to Jason, and just let them know this was happening. You know, we've always said together uh, collectively that you know it's not something we were gonna ever remake or, or redo, and so um, I wanted to let them know that this kind of reimagining was coming out, not with the same characters. We can still say we're never going to redo our show. It's just a, I, I gave them like a little bit of background, and let them know that this is going to be coming um, just so they're not caught off guard. I feel like, you know, the original is kind of all of our shared legacy. Um, it's not just my show. Um, uh, it's, it's shared with a lot of other incredibly talented people who are still very important to me today. So um you know, I let them know they uh, I think like like me initially were like, well, wait, is this going to is this a remake? What is this going to be? So I told them yeah. what, what the show was and and how it was different. Um, and uh, and they felt, you know, uh, they're incredibly supportive. They're, they're incredibly supportive. Um, I think the fact that we're set in 1968, the same time. Uh, I think it will make it difficult for them <laughs> to come back. <laughs> think, yeah. You could see Danica as like, you know, a baseball mom or something like that, you know, just a <laughs> quick pop up where you're like, whoa, did I just. Oh, she would have to be a kid though, right? Because it's, right. it's 68. Right, 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 mm-hmm. right. Yeah, yeah, from another exactly. side. So yeah. I think that might make it hard, but um, there might be opportunities down the road where we can drop little Easter eggs, you know, people who are familiar with the original. Uh, we might, you know, kind of leave some, leave a trail of breadcrumbs uh, in some <laughs> episodes. But I think that, um, you know, with these early ones, we want to, you know, really plant our flag and and, and really uh, show people how, um, you know, we're a, we're a, we're a different show. Um, but yeah. at the end of the day, the, they were all, you know, incredibly supportive and, you um, you know, uh, and, and wish, wish, wish us, uh, well with this for sure. It was beautiful. Okay. What, uh, Danica did though, what I, with Milan. Yes. Like she, she put a, a message out there. I thought was so just touching and, and really inspiring I, that she would sow that kind of good seed into another young actress coming up. I thought was really, uh, mm-hmm. uh was, was phenomenal. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right. And do I want to ask you something, you know, when you look through looking at the world, looking at 1968 through a 12 year old's eyes, is fascinating because something as crazy as desegregation, when you listen to a 12 year old tell it, mm-hmm. it's very different than how as an adult you would look at it and be angry or, or a 12 year old is just like, we change schools. What do right. you think about how you're explaining all these difficult things in this show? Well, I think I, you know, out of the mouths of babes, I think there's mm-hmm. innocence that, that comes out of children and it allows us to receive things in a different way because it's coming from the mind of a child. Mm-hmm. So all of the, I guess, complex issues that are there inside the show being said through the, through the lens of, of Dean, I think will, it will really give the audience a chance to put down the guard and just yeah. receive the message. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think the more that we can receive the message, then the more we can grow and unify really as, a, as an audience, but also as, as collective citizens of the world. Mm-hmm. And we ain't even talked about Don Cheadle, y'all. No, and, and oh, listen, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable, right? How, how good is that? What's that call like when Don says, okay, I'm in, I'm in. Oh, man. Yeah, what oh, was man. that call like? That no, was a good, that was a good, that was a call. That, that was a call in the, uh, in group, uh, a hiking call. Don, do this. <laughs> really? You think I can? Yeah, Don, do it. Yep. <laughs> Wow. That's a- He's doing it. Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> he was our first choice. He was the first person that we went out to. You know, look, 
that's that's when you have the benefit of having the Lee Daniels, you know, name <laughs> behind you. You know, those things that you know, those things that seem impossible become possible. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm so honored, guys. It really is. I mean, he's and he's so hearing his voice is so soothing. You know, yes, it's so soothing. Mm-hmm. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it, it 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 is all part of a fabric that is making for a great show. Now, I have to ask a question from the festival sponsor, City and. How do you find the happy medium between bringing humor and drama to a story highlighting a black family navigating the trials and tribulations of life in Montgomery, Alabama in the 1960s? Saladin, I'll let you answer that. You know, we all, like, one thing that we really want to do with this show is, like the original did, capture the tone of humor, grounded character moments, heartfelt moments, you know, the the reality of life. and I understand people's concerns, you know, how can you find humor, you know, during those turbulent times? And the humor comes from, first of all, the nostalgia and the fact that one of the many, many great things about the Black experience, about Black people, is we've had to have all these emotions during tough times throughout our American history, especially, you know, so it's, some of that is in, in the DNA of our culture. But there's a professor who, ironically enough, did some research on the original one of the years. Her name is Amanda Ann Klein from East Carolina University. And she's very interested in this. And she, you know, I'm going to quote her um, with the statement that nostalgia should not be a white privilege. You know, black people had nostalgia as well. We have happy memories. We have fond memories. We had good experiences. We had ups and downs and things like that, that are also a part of our experience that needs to be represented fully on screen and not just one, you know, facet of our experience. So the way we find that humor, honestly, is to remember the funny things about our families, remember the funny things about our parents, remember the funny mm-hmm. things about our experiences, you know, the funny things about self-discovery, the funny things about failure, the funny things about successes, you know. So those that humor exists and what we discovered um, in the pilot and that we would try to emulate the best we can, you know, going forward is the real moments, the the grounded moments, the um the sometimes sad moments, the uh, bittersweet moments, you know, those resonate more when you are surrounding them with the re- very real funny moments as well, because that's what real yeah. life is. And it makes it feel real to us. Yeah. When we sit around the table, we'll talk about your crazy uncle along with exactly. other things that happen. But, you know, we always bring in that crazy uncle. Listen, um, I-, I think this is the show to watch this fall. I think what you're doing is special. And it is, I'm, I'm so excited for this show, but I'm so excited for the world to see it and fall in love with this cast and everyone who created it. So thank you all for what you're doing. It is a difference maker. You are helping change the world. So thank y'all. And um, thank you out there for joining us for this special Paley Fest Fall TV previews conversation with the members of the wonderful Wonder Years. Um, it, it hits on ABC. Do we have a release date? The 22nd, correct? September 22nd, yes, sir. September 22nd. Appointment viewing, y'all. Um, thanks to Paley Fest's official card and uh, official sponsor, City. You can learn more about the Paley Center by going to the web and logging on to paleycenter.org. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Look at these faces. This is that moment before something blows up and people become like superstars. <laughs> I love this moment because it's great. But then the next time you see it, it's like, oh, well, my people got to you know. So, uh, no. You already like that, y'all. Kevin. You already asked like that. That's like <laughs> only to Saladin, though. Only to Saladin. You know what I mean? Not to you, Kevin. Only to Saladin. <laughs> Congratulations, y'all. I can't wait to see the next episode. All right? Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank Thanks, you. everybody.